This time on Stay Tuned, the Firebird gets blue! Welcome back to Stay Tuned, I'm Tony Angelo and I'm super pumped about today's project because we're going to work on one of my favorite cars ever, my 1974 Street Freak Firebird. Uh, and just a little background on this car, I bought this thing for a thousand bucks in 2019. Uh, it was kind of rusty, crusty, gross, it had been sitting for about 25 years. Now you can see obviously it was like a masterpiece in the 80s but then it just sat forever, no motor. It hadn't run, it hadn't done anything. So we spent quite a bit of time knocking the rust off, polishing out the paint. We built a killer 462 Butler Performance Stroker engine for this thing. It's up and running. It makes about 400 horsepower. It's got a Muncie four speed and it's awesome, but it's not exactly done because I need to fill that big hole in the hood and in my heart with this 671 blower. Let's go. So this is the blower setup we put together for my Firebird. This is a Speedmaster 671. Uh, it's sitting on top of a BDS intake manifold and I've got two Holley 750 supercharger carburetors. It's a killer setup. It's gonna increase the power of this thing a ton and it's gonna look and sound awesome. Boys are pulling the hood off now. We're gonna get ready to start fitting this thing in there. Zach already pulled the other intake manifold off. We just had a regular Speedmaster single plane with a Holley 850 on top of it. That's gone. We drained the coolant out. You have to do that on the Pontiacs because coolant goes through the intakes and we pulled off the valve covers. And now we can put on the fun party parts. Did I say potty par party parts. Did you get that? Party parts. Where are you going? It's too much reach if we just go like this. Got it. They had a plan. You had a plan. I like it. So the first step in putting a blower on your car is you have to get a manifold that's going to convert the blower output to the ports in your cylinder heads. Uh, this is a BDS piece. They're just about the only game in town for Pontiac stuff. So we bought the BDS intake and their drive system, which is some stuff you'll see later. We have already this sort of race style, totally closed off valley pan on here. And I'm going to try to sit it down here. I took this over to our buddy Larry as soon as it came in and had him take a 16th of an inch off of it. Larry is the engine builder that worked on our car. He's over at Robert's Engine Development. He does an awesome job, but we know we had these heads milled and we had to take a little bit of material off the last manifold. So we just did the same thing here. It looks like it fits really closely. There's a little interference with the heater hose poured on the back of that cylinder head. So I'm gonna just take a little material off here to fit it. If you were running like full race car style, that would be just another freeze plug and it wouldn't get in the way. That's plenty of material gone. This is gonna be the best. Oh, just your average 80s masterpiece, velour interior, supercharged, four speed Firebird. Oh, well, I love this car so much. A lot of pressure going on in this intake manifold, and these things have a tendency to uh, backfire and blow the blower clean off these things. A lot of people got hurt back in the day, so there's a lot of safeties on them now. When you see racers running with blowers, a lot of times there are like Kevlar straps that hold them down so that they can blow up but not go flying into the stands and hit people in the head, stuff like that. You don't want one of these things chasing you around the grandstand. There's a lot of safeties. This is one of the things they do. Essentially, if there's a big backfire, the idea is that these are spring-loaded It'll back this thing off, let that pressure out without anything exploding and going flying. We'll see. A lot of times people that have like a bigger, more gnarly blower setup will have a, a burst plate in here. It's a one-time use thin piece of aluminum. <laughs> anything goes wrong, it explodes, saves your motor, saves your carburetors from getting rocked. Uh, and then you just take it off, put a new one on. I've done that on the Finnegan's Hemi. 
uh, 11,000 times. I just got installed the water neck with the thermostat, the gauge sender for the coolant temperature gauge, and this little bypass fitting that connects to the back of the water pump. This thing's about ready to install. Let me get you up to speed on these blowers. Now the deal is, people always talk, the blower this, 871, 1071, that. What are they? So when guys were coming back from World War II and wanted to go faster with their flathead Fords, one resourceful genius named Barney Navarro looked at a Detroit diesel six-cylinder uh, engine, and it had on the side of it, because it was a two-stroke, a supercharger kind of built into the thing. And he realized he could take it out, make some adapter plates, hang it on top of his flathead Ford, figure out a drive system, hang some carburetors on top, and go much, much faster. And that's how it all started. It's such a cool story. People have been working on improving these things for years. The originals were 3, 4, and 6, 71s. Now they've essentially built them up to be up to 14, 71. That's the kind of stuff you'll see on more serious drag cars. And they're, they've evolved to have uh, different lobe configurations, high helix ones, which different twisted rotors, things like that. But it all started when one dude in a junkyard looked at a two-stroke diesel motor and said, I can use that for my car. And that's like the essence of hot rodding. So I can't wait to get this thing on there. All right, we finally have a manifold on here. Now we can start talking about putting this blower down. Uh, you put a base gasket. These are special studs. These are aluminum again. Uh, blowers are wild and dangerous. You know, it's this giant belt-driven supercharger cramming air in your engine. Explosions can happen. So these are actually made to break so that it doesn't blow. Like if it breaks and it blows up, it just blows free was I think the original idea behind these things. Yeah. Dude, all right, so the BDS intake manifold is down. It seems to fit pretty well. Uh, and now it is time to lay down our Speedmaster 671 supercharger right on top. I come in or... Boom. There she be. There it is. A big, beautiful, old school supercharger sitting right on top of that thing. This is a Speedmaster 671, it's what they call a small bore. It's like sized well for like a street strip car. Um, not gonna make crazy ultimate thousand horsepower, but it's, gonna, it's probably gonna pair really nicely with these stock 6X heads that we're running currently. I hand ported them for a little bit more flow. So I had mocked up uh, the pulley and the blower snout here. Uh, mock up is a fancy word for saying I wanted to put it on my Instagram and it looked cool. Tangelo 96 if you want to be part of the fun. There it is. So this little coupler is what connects the blower to this big drive snout. I'm just gonna slide it in. It's got an O-ring. This gets filled up with oil and then we're just about ready to rock. No studs? So these blowers usually have a sight glass in them and you're just gonna fill either in one of the bolt holes. I actually have the little vent out right now. I'm gonna run pen grade, actual blower racing lube. It's just 75W90 with a couple of extra little choice additives that I'm not allowed to tell you about, mostly because I don't know what they are. I'm finishing up installing the belt tensioner and the front drive snout. Zach's put on the dual carb plate for the intake, dropped on two 750 Holley supercharger carburetors, and is working with this four barrel linkage setup from Wyand. It's a lot of moving parts here. All right, we are blazing through this. We have our blower on top. Carburetors are bolted down. The linkage is pretty well dialed in. Zach, give it to me. <laughs> Crushed it. Uh, tensioner is on. Everything is pretty much on for good, but now we have to drive this thing, right? It's a belt-driven supercharger, so it means it runs off the crankshaft. So we're going to pull the crankshaft stock pulley off, uh, the accessory pulleys down there, all that stuff out of the way, and put on what's just really a hub and a couple of pulleys and a big old blower pulley so we can get this thing going. Before we do that, we're going to turn it over to Top Dead Center because the new hub that's going on uh, has came with some timing tapes. So we want to make sure it's just right. That's 
technology right there, baby. Perfect. Now I'll take it out of gear. So anytime you're going to run a big old supercharger off of your crank, pulley, anything that's belt driven, usually people do a second pin. This is like a, a different key, a second key to transfer all that power because if not, you can actually spin your hub on the crankshaft itself. It'll slip from all of the, it does take quite a bit of power to spin these things. So this one has been double pin. This is the factory eighth inch pin and then we added a second quarter inch pin into the Eagle Forge crankshaft. Uh, and then this hub, crank hub from uh, BDS is going to accept that so it's be much stronger. A lot of times you'll, the kits that come aftermarket will give you like a fixture to drill one in. It's gotta be pinned one way or another to transfer all that power or it's gonna slip and you're gonna be in trouble. So I've got the key already in there. I'm gonna slide this hub on. We're not gonna have a harmonic balancer anymore, but apparently the belt will do most of that job, supposedly. I'm excited. Race car stuff. Serious race car stuff now. All right. So, we got these sweet Butler fabricated valve covers that I had anodized like, I don't know what, six months ago, forever ago. Anodized gold, like 70s yeah. style. Yeah. That's the point. A lot of these old cars had like cool stamped gold ones, so we want to get that vibe, but also have nice brand new Butler ones. Yeah, exactly. So when we went to put these on the motor, when we put the motor in the car the first time, we had an 11 inch brake booster on here and they weren't even close to fitting. Not even in the ballpark, broke my heart. We had to put some stamped ones on. So we got an eight inch booster now to round out the package. We had to get these things on with the blower, so we're gonna stick them on. Yes! Oh, bolts go in the holes. Dang, that's pretty cool. All right, we just realized Zach is not wearing his stay tuned gear. I got you, because everybody else. Michael, yeah. show him, come on out. What you got on? Look at him, look at him, swing it. Ooh, baby. What about you? What up? He's in there. Official. Love it. Hell yeah. You know, every like awesome t like car TV reality show, right before commercial break, they're like, somebody walks up and they're like, boss, this bracket's not gonna fit on the car. And they're like, oh my God. Oh my God, if we don't get that bracket on this car and sell this car to our client, we're gonna lose the shop. Everything is gonna fall apart. They're gonna sell, the bank's gonna come and take our farm. And then boop, boop, commercial comes back and he's like, I ground the thing, it fits. And then everybody goes on with their day. Woo, fake drama. Anyway, that's what this shirt's about. It's hilarious. Buy one. You can go on Tangelo96 Instagram, click on my link and buy one. There's probably a link in the description to buy one. Get some. Oh my God. We got this huge bolt from door. Woo! Let's see if it's the one. So oh, this BDS blower drive kit yeah, came nice. with this bolt to put the V-belt pulleys onto this crank hub we got down here and it is way too short, not even close. So we went back to the Dorman bins and got yeah. one that's quite a bit longer. We're going to try in here. We got two of them. We got this. Okay. Obviously like this is going to now, now we're set up to drive the blower, but we need to spin the water pump and the alternator and hopefully power steering so we can't fire it right up, although I want to. Right now. I'll fire it. You, listen, you fire it up, I'll spin the water pump by hand just so we can get some water going, just so we hear it. That's something. Right there, boy. Now we're doing it. This feels like hot rod. That's Woo! right. All right, so this is not a big block Chevy, so it's much harder to get parts for it. We're trying to figure out how to make V-belts work with the blower, drive an alternator, and a power steering pump. Uh, we bought this very basic tin Indian alternator mount that just bolts off of the cylinder head 
It's supposed to bolt off this cylinder head, um, but we're going to try to run it off of the passenger side. One thing we know is that essentially driver's side and passenger side cylinder heads are not in line. The passenger one is forward. We're going to take a little bit of spacer off of that thing. They say in the instructions, like you can kind of work this in however you want. Aftermarket cylinder heads, there's four bolt heads, six bolt heads. They're like, just figure it out and make it work. So it's a nice little piece and it kind of has a lot of flexibility. So we think we can make it work over there, which would be awesome because then we have this chap performance uh, piece to hang the power steering and then we'll be really close to firing this thing up. The last piece of the puzzle will be making an upper radiator hose that can sneak under the blower and over the power steering pulley and then we'll be in business. I like that. Nice bumpy. Now what do you think? Real sex machine. Yeah, you give her a little, little test. She got a little this whole thing's supposed to grow when it gets warm, so you don't put them on too tight. Okay, so we have our Speedmaster 671 sitting on top of that Butler 461 Stroker Pontiac engine. It is time to fire this thing up. I am pumped. I'm ready to hear some horsepower. This thing should sound bananas. Uh, it took a while. Apparently, I'm never going to have power steering. That didn't work out. Whatever. Forget it. Uh, but we've got the coolant in there, the alternator set up. Uh, we're ready to go. There's no throttle pedal, so I'll work it from out here. All right, Zach. Make sure it's in neutral. boy. Give her a wiggle. There we go, right up. Got the blower on the bird. Before we take it to the dyno and any time down the street or the strip, we're gonna put on some serious suspension. So we're running the entire new QA1 version two drag package. These are super lightweight tubular arms, dual adjustable shocks, coilovers. This thing is going to absolutely kill it. I've been running this stuff for a long time and it just keeps getting better. First thing we gotta do is tear all the old junk off this car. It's been sitting for decades. We can't get serious with it. So for drag racing, you need light, strong, and arms that move really easily, suspension that moves really easily so you can transfer weight where you need to. Uh, and to that end, this is the QA1 stuff. It's lighter than stock. These lowers are less than nine pounds. Uh, it has these super low friction ball joints and bushings. The stuff is super nice. Um, you do have to run these with their coilover system. There are other arms that are regular street arms you can run uh, with as much stock components as you want, stock shock, stock spring, whatever. But this stuff is used just with their coilover. You can see compared to this essentially big old flexi brick, this is entirely worlds better. And that's just how low friction they are. They slide right out of this thing. This stuff is gonna work crazy. So these pockets in here that the control arms sit in were really tight. This is a little trick I learned from the old man back in the day. You put a bolt in here with a nut and a plate, and you just get a little uh, separation on it. Just enough, 16th of an inch or so, just to get those in and then tighten them back up again. I want to just hit these with a little pre lube, a little grease. They do have little fittings to fill those little pockets with grease, but I just want to get something on there. Ready? Yeah. All right. These are going to slide right in, right? Sure. Walk it in. There you go. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, I'm installing these QA1 double adjustable shocks now. These are now full coilovers. I put anti-seize on the threads because the collars are alloy and the shock body is alloy. So they will corrode if you don't put some anti-seize on them. And I had to take the lower mounts and replace them with these spherical mounts. Beauty. Again, you can tighten that up in the air because it's all spherical. We're not worried about the travel. So wheelie mode is rebound, which is like extension, super light. Crank it all the way down. It's all the way out. And then what, half compression, it's you think? It's almost like Zach got in here and twisted these. Nah, they're just all, they're both all the way out. <laughs> I wouldn't be, I wouldn't put it past them. Did the instructions say your wheelies set here? It doesn't say anything about wheelies. I don't even know if they know what they're making. This is a wheelie machine. That's what I'm working on. We... The same scenario here, super light, super strong tubular arm. Uh, these have droop stops so you can adjust your suspension when it actually starts to pick the wheel up. That's gonna add load to the front end. So that's, I don't really know that much about drag racing, but we'll figure it out. This is an aluminum cross shaft, so it's super light. And again, just really low friction bushings and ball joint. Can you see what's going in there? There you go. And just to get us to the alignment shot, I'm going to put the same amount of springs that came out of shims that came out of it back in it. Ish. We ordered up a steering kit that would fit 1970 to 81 Camaro and Firebird. Come to realize that the drag link is totally different. It turns out with a bunch of research and not that many people talk about it, the Pitman arm on the Pontiac is bent down and six inches long and on the Camaro it is straight and seven inches long. So the Camaro piece has this big bend on the idler side to sort of straighten everything out and to compensate. So if you take a Camaro drag link and stick it on your Pontiac, it's gonna steer wonky and uneven and be like the geometry is all over the place. So we're gonna put our old Pontiac one back in there. Apparently there's only one company making them called Rare Parts. We've got it on order, it's gonna be a while. Um, but for now we're just gonna put the original one back in so at least we have the right geometry. And the easiest way to tell, I think, this big drop here from the uh, Pitman arm to the first tie rod, or if you turn it sideways, this big bend back on the other end towards the idler. It's crazy. So I don't know how many Pontiacs are running around with the wrong steering geometry, but I guess it's probably a lot of them. Fourth Jeds to the moon. A couple more years, man, they'll be worse on. <laughs> Fourth Jeds? Nah. They're gonna, by the time they're worse on, they're gonna be like, we don't want cars anymore. Fourth Jeds are gonna miss it, I think. Yep. It's fine. You get a Fourth Jed with the title for 300 bucks. It's that sleek wedge design, maybe. I like the early ones. They definitely like. The early ones are better. I, I go. Mean, I, I might be a little biased, but. Let's do Camaro Jens. There's Fourth? First? Get out. No, it go I think it goes first, first, second, fourth, what? third, you didn't fifth, sixth, third? I guess. Maybe sixth, fifth. I do, I don't like the third gens. There's so I mean I know like IROX are cool, but I'm not I'd rather have a fourth gen. I think they're cooler. I'm almost like second and first gen are almost tied for me at this point. I'll put them tied for number one. All right, so we've knocked out the front suspension. Now we're onto the back. What we're gonna be doing is installing the QA1 double adjustable shocks. Essentially, and we're gonna go into this when we get the car on track tuning wise, we wanna put a lot of load on the back when it, when it hits the line and leaves and then let it kind of slowly move up, put the weight on the front so you can steer when you're going you know, 60, 70, 150 miles an hour. We'll deal with it all later, but know that these are again, dual adjustable compression and rebound independently adjustable so you can really dial them in. Uh, we've got these extenders put on here because we like to ride nice and high, old school style, and they bolt right in. It's very simple, basic procedure. We will probably change out these springs. Obviously, big blower power, taking it, drag racing. This little 10 bolt, eight and a half inch rear end is not gonna hold up. So we do have a nine inch in this thing's future, but right now, it's been a while. 
We just want to get the shocks on. We've got the whole front suspension done. The blower is on. We're going to finish this up, get the brakes done, and take it to the dyno and see what kind of power this thing finally makes. Are you going to the top first or bottom? I think we did the top first. Let's do the top first. Then we put weight on it and get the nuts started. All right. He's bolt right in place of stock. Again, uh, figure out where you want your adjusters to point when you tighten it down so you have access to it with the wheel on. We'll probably send ours like this as long as there's no issue with the spring movement. And we are ready to rock here just about. Should do it. That's good. I usually tighten them up till the bushing bolt is just out over the top of the washer. And raise her up. So now we're going to talk brakes. Uh, one thing we tried to get away with was just doing the front brakes on this car. Uh, new calipers, pads in the front, new master cylinder, now a new booster. And uh, just because we knew a 9 inch was going to get swapped into the back. And guess what happens? It doesn't work. When you have a master cylinder that's got shared, uh, essentially, like circuits front and rear like any regular stock style that's got the two in there this has fully seized wheel cylinders they're not going anywhere so that back circuit is just rock solid and it doesn't allow the front to do much you got to push on it super hard the car is now making some serious power we hope and it's just been a little bit sketchy to drive so i'm going to swap in new rear wheel cylinders from dorman uh, I've got their entire hardware kit. Dorman is an awesome Pennsylvania company. They've been around over 100 years making different auto parts and uh, they've been supporting Stay Tuned for a very long time. So we, we really like their stuff. We use it whenever we can. I'm going to pull in here. Drum brakes are my least favorite thing ever. Yep. So I'm going to take a picture of this so I can get it back in the same uh, exact configuration. Come in here. Living dangerous without the phone case today. Take a picture exactly how it's dialed in. There are people who are good at drum brakes. Uh, none of them work here, apparently. <laughs> There's the lever guy. And what you want to do is find someone uh, who grew up before the internet and ask them how to do it. Find somebody that saw Metallica before Cliff Burton died. You know what I'm saying? Some OGs get their, get their take on it. Feel free to ruthlessly roast me in the comments for all of these maneuvers. But essentially, tear everything off uh, and figure out how to get it back together. And that's, that's the way to do it. And this is the problem part. This is the wheel cylinder. Clearly frozen. Hasn't moved in forever. There it goes. So this is that seized, dirty old dog over here. Wasn't doing us any good. New dormant piece bolted right up. You can see that thing hasn't moved in forever. Look how far in those are and just stuck. Cool, a little high temp lubricant on these six points and the pivot on the top. Start talking about putting some parts together. All right, a quick adjustment from Zach. Uh, this is all back together. It's just that easy. I'm sure the other side will be even more fun. Then we'll do a quick uh, bleed on the brakes. It should be ready to rock. Then we're gonna take this thing to the dyno, see what kind of horsepower it makes. We're here at our local dyno shop. PSR Performance, this is Brad, it's his shop. Nice to meet you guys. He's ready to put the hot tune on our supercharged Firebird. And uh, the blown bird is here. This is, I told you, it's a small bore 671, uh, Holley 750 blower carbs on top. And I have it set up right now to run pretty low boost because we don't know exactly what it's going to make. We're going to wind up, I don't know exactly how much it's going to take. How much do you want to make? A lot. You want to make <laughs> a lot is the answer. So. Uh, we got a little bit of uh, aviation gas, I smelled that allegedly, right <laughs> in the tank, and we're going to see what this thing can do. Um, I've got the 6 BTM, so that's how we're going to pull timing out. Pretty basic setup. Like I said, the supercharger with this pulley combo, I think I'm at 42 on the bottom and 54, 56 on the top. Uh, so it shouldn't make much boost right now, but I'd like to get a couple runs in and then we can start turning it up. Who wants to make horsepower guesses? This goes badly every time. <laughs> every single time. Don't break our hearts today, Brad. What did it make before NA? 340. 330. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to say this is going to make 6 pounds and 420. Ugh. 420? 420. What's <laughs> 6 pounds? Are we talking, are we talking like ultimate power? No, 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 no. I'm saying with that pulley combination. With that pulley combination. 
But how much power will the, or how much boost will this blower make? That's the. Well, so here's the thing. This is a small bore 671. So eventually, what you're fighting is if thermal efficiency. If you spin it faster, believe it or not, at some point, more boost makes less power it's because too it's hot. it's too hot. Yeah, I'm telling them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we're gonna we're gonna find the sweet spot where this thing is efficient. And if we're like getting three or four or five more horsepower by adding a pound of boost, we know it's not efficient anymore and we'll back it back down. But I'd love to, you know, I'd love to run, what, eight pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds? A bit more than that. Yeah, 12 pounds. Let's see what happens. I gotta make a guess. I think, I'm thinking 440. 440 sounds like a good number, but I don't know. I think it looks like it makes more power than it does. I think that's the deal. So I know that this setup isn't gonna make a thousand horsepower, it's just not set up that way. This is a street blower. It's gonna make more than before. And one thing I know is that I think 340 was a soft number. So I'm gonna say this thing's gonna make 470 wheel. That's my guess. Add, add a nice low boost and we have to push a little harder with some race gas we can. I'd love to see 500. 500 would make me pretty happy, but I don't know, that's a lot of horsepower. Uh. The big boy pulley's on right now. I'm gonna say 430 as it is on six pounds, but I just rubbed the valve covers a little bit, and you know how I am about those valve covers. We're gonna put the small pulley on at the end of the day. I'm saying 510 wheel. That's what it's gonna make. That's 10 like pounds. Like you, gotta, you gotta rub the valve covers, man. We did everything to get those valve covers on this car. Changed the booster, like 37 sets of gaskets. We got him to work. That was the crowning achievement. 10 pounds, 510 wheel. Tires off the dyno real bad immediately. Shut up. <laughs> what? This thing's crazy. Yeah, my gas is looking so bad. Ha ha! We're above mine already. We're what? Wait, what just happened? I think you slipped the clutch a little bit. At first, I should have had some more heat. In no, the tires no, they blew, blew, dude. Did it blow the tire? Yeah, it blew the tires yeah. right off, dude. <laughs> like smoking. They were smoking the tires. Awesome. That was crazy. I wasn't sure if it was tire or clutch. It felt like clutch to me. No, that was tire. No, it was the tire. I was like, oh, he's <laughs> Like, this is crazy. So it made. F f do you think that number is right? The horsepower number is right. The torque might be a little off because of the way it hits. Yeah, because it hits. You're only, you're only second guessing why? I don't know, because this thing finally makes some horsepower. See that what does this mean when you put on the second set of We're straps? putting the second set of straps on because it spun the tire immediately. You can see, look how slick they are. But, but that means it's probably pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> bad ass. It sounds, whoo, it sounds that, good, boy. Foot burnout we were talking about? Yeah, it'll do it. It'll do it. You're going to have one of those uh, the Australian burnout cars. Dude, it sounds so good. Yeah. <sighs> so this car has always been like, looked amazing. You know, we've done a lot of work to it. It's like looked super rad. It's like been coming together, been coming together, but it always didn't have this last final piece to make it as burly as it looks. And now it's, it's on there. It's still in the thing. So admit it we, now. Finally admit it we finally filled that hole. We finally filled that hole. Admit it now. Everyone was a little sad the first time. Oh, we were super sad. When it made 340, we were like, oh. This is, this is wild. Also, one thing we should talk about, if you've been following along with this project for a while, is that when I pulled this thing apart uh, to put on the new valve covers, one of the rockers for number eight, excuse me, number seven, uh, the intake rocker was just sitting in the valve cover. So we might have made 340 wheel horsepower on seven cylinders, which did seem disappointing at the time, but if it's on seven, that's okay. So what do you think about Brad's guess now? I don't know. What's, yeah, no, I don't think so. Hey, I said 440. Yeah. Yeah, you know what we know? We know his dyno doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> we proved it! Wait, our cars just suck? Oh. What's up? Our cars just suck? Yeah, our cars just suck. <laughs> Literally, 
it went from, so if you look at the gauge, it has like a little window at zero. It went on the other side of the window to the right. It went counterclockwise. Isn't it loaded up more in fourth gear? It and won't really change the way the blower works, no. Everything's hooked up. We need to put zip ties on all this stuff, but it's all good for now. So, it, so it made like two pounds. 447. 447, 480 foot pounds. I like that little chip action. Here's what's happening. Uh, at barely three pounds of boost at red line, this thing's making 440 wheel horsepower. So we're probably gonna run double the boost and see what happens. We gotta run six, right? We gotta keep going up. I don't know what's happening. We showed up, we've been here like five minutes and we're making a whole bunch of horsepower. This is like a very new thing for us. So these are blower pulleys. They're the same on the crankshaft and the blower themselves, so you can interchange them. And essentially it's all about getting the right speed. The faster you spin the blower, the more boost it makes up until a point when it becomes inefficient. Well, these numbers on these pulleys um, basically just relate to how many teeth are on each one. Um, so this is a 52 tooth, 56. This big one is a 60. If you put that on the crankshaft, it's gonna spin extra fast. You put it on the, on the blower, it's gonna spin really slow. So that's how it works. So this would be insane, 30 pounds of boost, blow everything up. This would be really slow, not make much boost. No, it's like eight pounds. Yeah, but we're gonna do 52 on the bottom so that we can do 56 on the top and then 48 on the top to go racing. All right, then. Look at it, look at it. 52 and 48. I don't know if we should, yeah, should we just leave it at six? Depends, Probably, te yeah. depends if we're tipping on that edge yeah, of 500. We should leave it at 6. Yeah, I we don't know. We should definitely uh, okay, leave it at okay. 6. I don't know. 100% we should leave it at 6. Well, like, the, reality is, the reality is, with this transmission and with this rear end, like it's going to be on dry. It's just going to explode both of them. Yes. He's in the jets from 76 to 73, which is about five thousandths if I remember right. Believe it or not, each jet doesn't mean it's the same change. Just, just grind on it. Zach slow. Gets, Zach gets the car pushing, pregnant. And it's it's the underrated, the underrated mechanic yeah. pushing your loins. Yeah, up against really. The front end. Really put your essence in there. <laughs> That's why I aim the engine bay to be like. You turned 23, dude, and now you're just bumping and grinding. Yeah, we're gonna do a 23 and me on this thing afterwards, too. The <laughs> father is. So Larry at the machine shop pulls out his calculator. He goes, oh, if you're running on race gas, uh, probably make like 630 wheel horsepower at eight pounds. He might not be far off. He really might not be far off. This is, this made 444 at two and a half pounds. He really... Okay, so we put on pulleys that we think are gonna dial up a bit more boost, maybe four or five pounds. We're thinking it was just cresting three at red line before, so a little bit more. Uh, we've got a bigger pulley on the bottom that we're hopefully gonna leave there, and we have essentially about the same size on top. It's just a little bit uh, bigger. We have a 52 and a 56, so it's gonna be what they call underdriven. It's spinning a little bit slower than engine speed, but I think it's gonna be pretty close. And then we have some smaller ones that'll get it over engine speed, we want to turn that party up. All right, hit it. Oh, we also did pull a little bit of fuel out. We've got smaller main jets in there uh, just to pull the fuel curve down a little bit. Yes. We also ordered pizza. We did order pizza, and also we ordered pizza. Barb, you ordered Atta pizza. That's my guy. Oh. Five twenty-five. Is that right? Five twenty-five. How much boost is it? I don't know yet. Like four point two. Oh my god. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> I told you it wasn't gonna go up much. It only added four teeth. So what do you have on it? The fifty-six and the fifty-two. Yeah. So the fifty-six on top. Yeah. Okay. I got a forty-eight though. <laughs> I think you got a forty-four. I have a forty-four also. <laughs> he likes to party. Little, because we're all the way in the back. 
at the tailpipe, so it's going to be a little slow to come in. Yeah. You can see we're fat on the tip end, so the squirters are good, mm -hmm. which is why it kind of maybe stumbles a little bit. I heard it, yeah. But I'm also thinking it might want a little bit more time when we have it, too. Because we dined on this on 93, right? Yeah. With aviation fuel, you want to run at least, like, usually it's like a degree or two more. Mm -hmm. So, like, you're being really conservative right now, which is fine, you know, but that might be why it has that little bit of stumble to it. It also has something to do with the way I get into it on the dyno, too. Yeah. All right, so it's now making, at four pounds of boost, 525 wheel horsepower on a Mustang dyno, which is solid. And it's it a lot. 561 torque. 560 torque at the tires. It's a lot. It's a lot of horsepower. <laughs> it's making some juice now. I don't know, more boost in it, I yeah. guess? See, I don't know. We gave this thing four pounds of boost, and it has picked up. 250 horsepower almost two no no excuse me 200 horse we're up 200 horsepower on four pounds of boost it's wild it's a blower motor i mean we knew it you know the the cam is set up for a blower the compression is set up for a blower oh man it loves it this thing loves boost also also i love boost <laughs> Tony, what was the number that you were running before we left? 470. I really wanted to, to crack 500 yeah. wheel, but, but I just, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. Now that it happens. Now that it happens, I'm stoked. Yeah, this is what yeah, I'm hoping for. It's almost like it was too well, easy. It's, I don't know. It, it just feels I, like it happened too quick. It did happen quick. A lot of things are going to happen quick in this car. A lot of things are going to happen quick. Like at this point, I'm like, we're going to twist that stock drive shaft right out of this thing. We're going to blow the axles out of it. Clutch can't hold. Transmission's on its, on like, you know. Living on a prayer at this point. <laughs> no, we'll see. Alright, we made 525 wheel horsepower. I feel like I'm in a dream here. I could, we've never come here and done anything. It's actually been going pretty well. It's, yeah, it's going pretty good. Oh, Knock on everything. So why not? We're gonna turn it up a little bit more. Look at that. Just just take a gander at that one. Yeah. Take a That's gonna be our party pulley for a while, I think. <laughs> this is a super easy setup that we can dial in on the fly. This is boost retard. Um, Essentially, as for every one pound of boost, it will take one, two to three degrees of timing out. I've got it at one and a half. Uh, so for seven pounds of boost, it's pulling 10 and a half degrees of timing. So I'm gonna turn it down to one, make it a little hotter. We got some good gas in there and we'll see what it does. But it's nice because if we go to the track, put on a small pulley, put some race gas in it, we can very quickly just turn that knob and be ready to rock at 100%. Oh yeah, it's pizza time. We are pizza, pizza time! Wow. Caesar salad, one fork. All right. Hell yeah. They make, a, they make a nice pizza. So we ended up with 568 wheel horsepower in my Street Freak Firebird. This thing is up and running after 30 years and it's better than ever. This thing rips. That's it for this episode of Stay Tuned, but maybe hang around and let's see what 568 wheel horses can do.